shady color. What is up, family? I'm on. Okay, let me stay focused. I'm going to go ahead and stay focused. What's up? It's your girl, D Ray, the Divine Relationship Alchemist, helping you heal your relationship with self to heal your relationship with others. First things first, shout out to my brother, Travis Magus, for the inspiration, for the light that he actually sparked in me to make this video because it was when he said it. I was just like, duh, D-Ray. So this video today is about healing the womb, right? Womb healing. Um, but then again, on a different level, it's about uh, the root chakra and the shape and the sacral chakra healing, all right? Womb healing, root chakra, sacral chakra. So men can use this same formula, this same ritual that I'm about to give you to actually heal those things. So shout out to him. Shout out to my brother, Travis Majors. And uh, I also want to say, listen, when we think in terms of freedom, because today is July 4th as I'm making this video, freedom is the ability to create from your mind intentionally. That's real freedom to me. Um, freedom is the ability to heal yourself, mind, body, and spirit. Okay? And so that's why I chose this day to make this video and to put this work in and I'm so, so, so excited about it because I'm a healer, healing is what I do. And I was actually receiving all of these different channels from spirit um, within my dreams and things of that nature that kind of, and it was just synchronistic for Travis Majors to message me about this topic, healing in general, because I was just having dreams and the words kept coming to my mind, make use of your gifts. So the very first thing that I'm going to say about why sickness or lack of abundance may even manifest in our lives is because we are not making use of our gifts, right? The God-given talents, uh, the things that have been bestowed upon us upon entering this realm. And sometimes we lose track of those things or sometimes we haven't necessarily identified those things, which is also why I made my video last week about how when we're in traumatic uh, experiences, sometimes our gifts come on then. But I say all of that to say, y'all, we have to be making use of our gifts, all right? And I'm just realizing I'm a shaman. I'm a healer. I'm, I'm like, I was just having all of these dreams and these synchronistic experiences that led me to realize that. So I'm going to make use of my gift and speak about healing, healing the womb, healing the root chakra by way of ritual today. This, why you speak to me? I got to make use of that gift too. That's why I'm, it just keeps on. I don't know. I don't know. Let me stay focused. All right. Anyway, so the first thing when we're healing our womb and we're healing our root and our sacral chakra is first understanding the thought form that has called us to have either a lack of abundance in those areas an actual physical illness, all right? And so all things first stem from a thought form, a belief, a feeling that you have. And in, in being able to heal, you have to first address that. Jewel Popram talked about this in all of her healing videos, which is what was kind of my guidance to do my own self-healing. Ultimately, figuring out the seven hermetic principles and actually applying those principles in all aspects of your life. And the first and most important principle is the law of mentalism. All right. The law or the principle of mentalism. Right. Okay. The all is mind. The universe is mental. So in, in understanding what has caused you to have any ailment, any illness or any lack you have to understand the thought processes, the mental aspects that you have projected out there that the universe is just reflecting back to you. That's correspondence. So in all of this healing and in this ritual that I'm going to give you today, understand that we're going to be using the uh, seven hermetic principles or the laws of the universe. We're going to put some of those at play. All right. And then the very first thing in understanding your healing is understanding mentalism. So you really have to tap into the thought forms that you have created that have caused you to have these ailments. Um, from my own experience, I've actually healed my womb. Okay. And what I was experiencing was cramps and, and severe PMS. And I like, wasn't even on my, on my cycle at the time. 
And so I was, I was just trying to figure out like, what is this? Why do I have, why is there so much lower vibrational energy there? Um, that, that just wasn't making sense. And so I had to meditate on it. So the first thing I'm going to tell you in this ritual in healing the womb and the lower two chakras, the first thing you have to do is meditate because you have to get to know and understand your why, why is this actually manifesting? And so when you meditate and you go into your meditation with the intention of knowing why, uh, why are you having this experience? Why are you feeling this pain? Why are you experiencing lack? You got to meditate on it. Okay. You got to meditate on it. You go into your meditation with the thought of what has happened in my past that has led me to believe and act, to believe, to think and act in this way that has manifested in sickness, that has manifested in lack. Okay. And so when you go into that meditation, different visuals will come up, different thoughts may come into your mind. The most important thing I'm going to tell you right now is trust what comes up right? Nothing may come up the first time you do the meditation with trying to understand what happens. It may come up in your dream. For me, it came up in a dream. I had a dream of my actual like shadow side, shadow realm experience. Excuse me. All right. I had a dream of that and all of my fears were presented to me in that dream. And that gave me a, a guidance system as to what I actually needed to heal. And I realized that I needed to heal the aspect of myself that felt really, truly safe and secure, that felt really honored, that felt like I belonged here, that felt that I was worthy, that I was valuable. And so the opposite of, the, of that safety, that security, that value, that worthiness, the opposite thought of that, the opposite feeling of that, the lack of value, the lack of worth, the lack of belonging, the lack of safety, the lack of security is what caused me to have pain in my womb. Okay. And so I had to understand that. So if it, if the thought form, if the, if the experience or if the traumatic experience of the past experience does not come up in your head as you're in meditation, it will probably come up in your dreams. So whatever comes up, you need to pay attention to that because that is going to be the very, uh, thing that you use, the very thought form that you actually transform alchemically to be what actually heals you. Okay. So the very first thing, and if you see me looking this way, it's because y'all, I don't want to miss anything for y'all. So I write stuff down, which is another important part of your healing, having a journal, having a binder, having something to where you can jot down your experiences so that you can look back over it and see where you've come from and where you are now. So the first thing is meditating, asking the subconscious mind to actually reveal to you and shed light upon what has caused you to think, act, and feel the way that you do, which has manifested in sickness, all right? And then again, that's funny because the very next notch I have right here is journaling. Right when you come out of that meditation, whatever thoughts that stood out to you the most in your meditation or whatever dream that stood out to you the most is so important that you actually write it out, write it down. Because sometimes we think that we got it. Sometimes we're like, all right, I know what happened. I got it. And then you get busy with life and you forget. And so it's so important to write it down so that you can go back to it and refer to it. Not only that, what you write down will give you the outline as to, like I said just a little while ago, what you write down will give you the outline of what you need to actually transform alchemically in order to create your healing. All right. And so that leads to step two. So step one in healing the womb. Or, or in healing that lower that lower part of yourself, healing your root chakra, your sacral chakra, both men and women can do this. Women, if you're having fertility issues, women, if you're constantly getting, say, like yeast infections, say if you're uh, constantly having severe PMS, all right? The beginning of this is understanding the thought forms that has created that. Men, if you have a lack of sex drive, men, if you are overly sexual, right? If you just are like a horny doc. You're like a horny dog with a little pink thing coming out. Men, this is for you too. Men, if you're impotent, meaning you can't get that thing up, this is for you too. Men and women, if you're lacking in abundance, right? If, if, you, if you're struggling, if the bills are tight and you don't know what's going on, this is for you. If your home life is riled up and in chaos, this is for you. All right? So... When you get the understanding of the thought form that has manifested you in this situation, the very next thing to do is to create an affirmation. I'm going to show you one that I did. Okay. Okay. 
my womb prayer and this was my womb affirmation so some people in the conscious community like ah prayer i don't like that word i don't care you have to understand what it is your prayer is you making your request known to your higher self so it does not matter what verbiage you use but basically you want to create an affirmation you want to create an affirmation that is the exact opposite of what has manifested your illness your sickness understand that this ritual this game plan this healing that i'm giving you it's an extended one you're going to keep doing it until you see the results all right and so like i said for me um I, I manifested this womb pain this womb uncomfortability to where my womb was just not at peace just from you know an underlying thought form of undeservingness of you know what did i do to be able to be in this situation what did i do to be able to be privy to this knowledge you know and then also the relationships that i have with my parents and so i had to create a I had to create an affirmation that was the exact opposite of those feelings. And so it's so important also that you type those affirmations up and you put it somewhere where you can see it all the time, which is exactly what I did here, which is why you see it on this paper, which is why these are connected, right? I taped them. So I typed them out, I printed it out, and I put it on my mirror. And I did that so that I can program my subconscious mind with the affirmation uh, unconsciously, right? I wanted it to be there and I wanted to walk by my mirror every day and stand in front of my mirror every day and see those affirmations, sometimes consciously and obviously sometimes unconsciously. Like when I'm doing my hair, I'm not even paying attention to those affirmations. I'm hooking myself up, but my subconscious mind is still seeing it and receiving it. And then there's also times within this ritual I will tell you where you will intentionally read off those affirmations while looking at yourself in the mirror mirror magic we're gonna do that too so again this ritual this healing tool is extended and it's going to be for however long you need it until you reap the benefits all right and so I created an, affir uh, an affirmation. And then also I want to shout out to this. You have to use your resources. You have to be digging into books. You have to be reading. You have to be Googling. You have to be researching things that are going to add to your healing, okay? And so for me, when I was doing this womb healing, I referred to Queen Afu as sacred woman. And I used an affirmation that she put on there, but I also added my own energy into it and my own thoughts and my own feelings and my own knowing as to what I needed to manifest. And so a little bit of that affirmation is my womb is love and so is my life. My womb is sacred and so is my life. My womb is peace and so is my life. My womb is full of energy and so is my life. My womb is divine and so is my life. My womb is great and so is my life. My womb is free and so is my life. So on and so forth. I, I You know, some of them I, I read uh, some of them I repeated in the affirmation, whatever just connected with me, I typed that out and I printed it out. And then the womb prayer is just the all out, what I wanted to say every day to my higher self, to my spirit for my healing. And so all of these things, you will make it relate to whatever you have going on in your life. Okay. And you base it off of whatever you discover to be the thought form, the energy, the belief, the emotion that has actually manifested your sickness. If you are on here and if you're thinking to yourself that I don't know what, why this is happening to me. Bullshit. I'm calling you out right now. It's bullshit. Do not comment on my video. Do not da 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 saying what I don't know da 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 da. Do your inner work. Do your inner research because whatever manifests in your life is a direct reflection of what you have going on within you. That is a, a principle that is undeniable. It is immutable. Okay, you cannot change that. It is fact. Whatever your thought process is, whatever your beliefs is, will manifest in your body, will manifest in your physical reality. There's no way around that. So you need to go deep. Go deep within. Go back to that childhood and discover what it is, what experiences that you've had that have led you to think a certain way that has manifested this in your body. This is, you will not heal just using the food. Let me make that clear to you because some of y'all be like, you know what? I'm going to just stay vegan, stay away from the dairy, stay away from the meat products. I'm going to just stay vegan and my body's going to do what it do. Your body may improve. It may improve some. But at the end of the day, it's not about the food. It's about the mind. Let's just be honest. 
The mind is all. The mind comes first. So be honest with yourself. Okay, I just got to I got to stress that. Be honest with yourself. And that can be hard. The ego will, will the ego will come up and be like, "No, no, 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 no. You're fine. No, 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 no. That, that's not true. That still doesn't affect you." Be honest with yourself, all right? Whatever comes up in meditation, whatever comes up in your dreams, please journal it journal it down and trust it, okay? The subconscious mind is not going to lie. Trust whatever comes up. All right? So you're going to make your affirmation you're going to post that information on your mirror, a place where you're going to see it every day. I say do the mirror. It's called mirror magic. And so what you're going to do in your nudity, in your nakedness, right, in your purity, you're going to stand in front of that mirror and you're going to say that affirmation. You're going to say that affirmation in the morning. You're going to say it at night. If you have a job, you probably ain't saying, if you have a job, then you're probably not looking in the mirror and being able to say it in the middle of the day. But if you get that opportunity, you go to the bathroom while you're at work and you haven't memorized, still say it. You want to say this affirmation as much as possible. But you want to look in the mirror saying it. You want to be looking at yourself in your eyes. Why? Because the eyes are the gateway to the soul, right? And so you want to be speaking past you want to be speaking past the conscious mind. You want to go past the conscious mind. You want to go into the subconscious mind, all right? You want to be looking at yourself in your eyes, which can get a little bit creepy because you really realize like, wow, I am not this body. And if you are not this body, if you are more than this body, then that you that is beyond the body has the has the ability to affect the body, right? So you want to get in the mirror, have that affirmation posted. You want to look at yourself in your eyes and you want to say that affirmation. And you want to say that affirmation feeling it, knowing, believing that the words that you are speaking are now your truth are now your new reality right so you want these affirmations to become a thought form of yours and these affirmations will actually go within and start healing your body you're speaking to the hundreds of thousands and trillions of cells in your body and those cells have no other choice but to conform to your new thoughts your new beliefs but you have to be consistent i was i was on these affirmations and my womb prayer I was on them for a good two, three months. A, a good two, two, let me say two, probably wasn't three. A good two months, I was on it strong until I felt a noticeable difference within my body. Okay? So you're going to put in that work. You're going to put in your, you're going to put in the work until you reap the benefits. So looking at yourself in the mirror in your nakedness. The next step. So I got some supplies here. So one thing that you're going to always need to do is have you some Florida water, all right? This Florida water is going to be cleansing, cleansing your energy, cleansing your aura. And I always say, whenever you're on your healing path and you're actually healing your body, you're healing those lower two chakras, you really need to be taking your spiritual baths, all right? You know, dribble some of this. Obviously, you can see this has been you being, being used, but... Drip some of this into your spiritual bath and take a spiritual bath. There's so many ways to do a spiritual bath. Do it what relates to you. So you're going to do that. But the next step about the mirror magic, the next step about the mirror magic is, is you're going to create your own uh, healing oil, your own healing body rub, right? Or your own body butter, okay? You're going to heal yourself using the energy that you are infusing into it so what i did was this is coconut oil you can't really see it this is coconut oil right before it was coconut oil it was actually shea butter shea butter baby it was shea butter okay and what i would do is i got some essential oils this is an anointing oil so it's a blend and this blend has frankincense and myrrh Frankincense, myrrh, and jojoba oil in it. Frankincense, myrrh, and jojoba oil in it. Frankincense and myrrh is known worldwide for cleansing and clearing energy. It's a healing, it's a healing oil. And then the jojoba oil is just a carrier oil, right? To kind of dilute the frankincense and myrrh. So what I did, I would take my essential oil. Now, again, it's going to be based off of what you are trying to accomplish. So you're going to need to do your research. Frankincense and myrrh can be used for anything. So if you want to just use what I use, which totally works, use a frankincense and myrrh. And what you're going to do in your oil or in your shea butter or in your coconut oil, whatever your base is going to be, you're going to drop 
a couple of oil, a couple of drops of the oil in here, right? And when you do that, and I've already done this, so I'm just doing it again just to show y'all. Now you're going to speak to the oil. What is this oil? What is this shea butter? What is this coconut oil? What is it going to do and manifest for you? So um, right now, you, you're would you going to speak into the oil. So you're going to say, my body, mind, and soul is happy, healthy, and whole. This oil is helping to heal my womb. This oil is bringing my root and my sacral chakra into complete and balanced alignment. My womb is love, and so is my life. My womb is peace, and so is my life. My womb is balanced, and so is my life. All right? And you're going to mix that up. Now, I didn't already did this. This has already been done. Like I said, I've been did this. But you're going to mix that up, right? And so speak your affirmations to whatever it is that you want to heal, whatever it is that you want to manifest, you're going to speak it into your oil. And then every day, every morning and night, you're going to take that oil and you're going to rub. I'm not going to show you my belly, but you know that I'm doing it, even though I've done it already before. And you're going to rub passionately and intuitively because your hands are healing. They're yours, right? You're going to rub passionately and intuitively into the root chakra, into the sacral chakra. And you're going to have the affirmation that you just said in mind, or you could even say the affirmation. So my body, mind, and soul is happy, healthy, and whole. My body is functioning at ultimate level. My cells are working in the way the creator intended. My body is filled with love, light, and joy. My body is peace. My body is whole. My body is sacred. My body is one. My body is in complete wholeness, right? Whatever it is that you know you need to be saying and affirming to yourself, that's what you're going to do as you rub that oil on your sacral and on your root chakra, all right? So that's what you're going to do every morning and night. You got to do that until you see the benefits, right? Um, the next thing, the next things that you will use, we've been talking about this on uh, Love Lift Life and So It Is Written, my girl Mook, we were talking about this, we're talking about herbs. And so there's so many herbs that do so many different things. I can't focus this because it's so bright, but these are all different herbs and you use these herbs. See, whenever we're talking about healing, you got to combine some things. You got to combine some things and work it out. This is blessed thistle. It says spiritual aid. So this is just spiritual support, right? Blessed thistle, spiritual support. Shave grass, fertility, right? So if you're a woman and you're dealing with some fertility issues or womb issues in general, shave grass. That's an herb. And then uh, angelica root. This is for healing. This is for protection. This is for vision. So whatever you're doing, you want to combine these herbs, all right? And you combine these herbs in your teas. You combine these herbs in your spiritual baths. You can even combine these herbs into whatever oil you decide to create, right? So let's, let's go back over this healing ritual that we're doing. The first thing is meditating. Meditating and and, and and paying attention to your dreams for however long you need to so that you can identify the thought form that has caused your ailment. The second thing is making an affirmation that is that goes that is the exact opposite of what you have manifested, of what you have thought, of what you have felt that have led you to experience lack, that has led you to experience pain. You're going to create that affirmation. When you create that affirmation, I want you to type it up, print it out, Paste it on your mirror. Tape it on your mirror. Tape it somewhere where you'll see it every day, preferably the mirror, because when you see it, you, you're seeing yourself. When you see those words, you're seeing yourself actually being and living those words, okay? So you want to paste it on your mirror. You want to be taking a spiritual bath weekly, all right? Because we'll have this new thought form that we're manifesting, that we're living, but what's going to continue being projected is the thought form that is already programmed in us. So we take spiritual baths with Florida waters. Uh, we sage and things of that nature. We actually even create our own healing and protective oils. These are, see, those are uh, bay leaves in there. And everybody knows bay leaves are good for protection. And there's some Himalayan. There's actually uh, some Franken, that's frankincense in there. Actually, frankincense is risen in there. Again, protection. So you want to keep things like this on your person. I actually keep this one on my person, which is uh, Florida water, some rosemary oil, again, some protective oil. You want to keep these things on your person because when that old thought form comes up that is not in alignment with what you're manifesting now, you simply want to spray this in your aura. You want to spray this around you. You want to spray this wherever you are. I spray this all the time, okay? This right here, this is my go-to. You know what I'm saying? If I'm not feeling my best, if my energy is low, if I'm having 
a thought form that is not in alignment with what I want to manifest now, this is what I spray, all right? So you need tools, right? You need tools because the only way that we actually heal is by repetitiously, continuously corresponding and thinking and feeling on the vibration, law of vibration, on the vibration as to what we want to manifest, right? And so you want to use things that correspond to actually what you want to manifest as well. So if you're, if you're wanting to manifest a greater abundance, right? Greater prosperity. And you know that you've had a thought form of lack, then you need to be using things that are of the element of earth. All right. If you, if you know you want to manifest fluidity in your emotions, if you know you want to be able to release your emotions, cause that's sacral chakra, you want to be able to release your emotions. You want to let your emotions flow. You want to hone in on your sexual, uh, energy and you want to treat yourself, yourself as sacred, then you need to be using a water element herb or oil. All right. But you want to keep things like this on your person, in your purse, in your backpack, in your pocket. I don't care where you want to keep these things with you because whenever those thoughts come up that are not in alignment, you want to spray, spray, spray and get out of that and get out of that state of being and get yourself back to where you need to be continuously polarity in order, in order for you to actually hear. And, and another thing, my bad family my video stopped the, the the microphone fell i don't know what's going on but i'm gonna keep going on all right i don't know what happened but anyways what i was about to say was the next thing that you actually want to make sure that you use in this healing is crystals all right this is some citrine can't really see it because it's lighted this is some rose quartz and so for me I was definitely working a lot with rose quartz. I wear rose quartz every day, right? Because I understood that my self-love, my self-value was what I needed to tap into. My uh, my unconditioned love was what I needed to tap into to actually heal my womb and to actually heal those lower chakras for myself. And so what I would do, another aspect of this healing, what I would do is you need a mirror, right? Don't mind my little mirror. It's probably a little dirty, but... What I would do is every evening after I took my nighttime shower, I would lay in my bed and I would yoni gaze or womb gaze. So for my women, this may be a little uncomfortable for you. Men, this may be uncomfortable for you, but it's something that you need to do. Uh, women, your womb is a gateway. It's a portal, literally. It births children and brings new life into here. And it also is, again, it's the womb. It's you know, triple darkness, it's the whole, it's the black dot, it's all of those ama amazing things that it really is. It's a place of so much pleasure and so much love and so much, I mean, it's just amazing. It's divine, right? And so, yoni gazing. And so that's what I did to heal my womb. So I would get out of the shower. I'm already naked, of course. And I would, I would position this mirror in front of me down low. I would take my healing oil that I've already created. And these oils are completely safe for, you know, to go internal if that does happen. So it's safe. But I would take that oil and I would have me a crystal. And I would sit the crystal just on top of my belly. And I would massage the oils in my hand. And I would massage my yoni and massage my womb while saying my affirmations. So now I'm taking it a step further. Now I'm infusing my womb, I'm infusing my yoni with the affirmations, with the healing oil, all right? So this healing is multi-layered. It's multi-layered. There's multiple steps that you have to do. And so yoni gazing is so powerful and important. And men, women, if you have a sacred man, if you have a man that is a divine man, you have a sacred union, he can gaze into your yoni and, and, and heal it as well. And you will also heal him by him gazing into your yoni. So you want to get that out there, look at it. You want to rub your womb. You want to say affirmations to your womb. You want to have gratitude for your womb. You want to massage your womb. You want to just love on yourself and 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 give that give that healing energy to yourself. All right, and that will be healing the root chakra and the sacral chakra beyond your uh, you know your greatest imagination. It's so healing. It's so. It feels so amazing, I'm telling you from experience. And then you keep this up however long you need to. Now, on the mundane level, this is the spiritual work that you're doing, right? But to add to it and to fire up your healing, 
You do want to eat healthy, all right? You do want to stay away from dairy. You do want to stay away from the meat. You want to stay away from eating anything that is low vibrational, right? You want, you want to make sure that when you are cooking your food, you're speaking life, health, healing into your food. Uh, you also want to start dibbling and dabbling in different healing herbs like selenium, like turmeric, like uh, green tea extract, like um, magnesium, like milk thistle. You want to start in, in incorporating those into your daily regimen, okay, because that's actually going to help the body to heal. Most importantly is cultivating the thought. Cultivate in the thought, and then you put in the work. All of this stuff that I just showed you, all of this stuff that I just showed you, crystals, sage, all of that stuff, that's the work. That's the work. That's the healing ritual. You want to take your time and do that. And then you want to add into that the eating healthy. Everybody should be taking turmeric. Everybody should be taking milk thistle. Milk thistle helps the liver. The liver is what kind of helps the entire body by, you know, taking in toxins and things of that nature. Selenium, everybody should be taking that. Activated charcoal, everybody should be taking that. Um, getting your greens in, everybody should be doing that. So all the, all the food and all the herbs are just a supplement. They supplement the healing that you're already doing. Um, this Sunday is my last Sunday for doing free readings. It's going to come to an end. It's been a lot. I've, I've worked up that energy. My spirit is like, that is enough, t -Ray. You've done your work. This Sunday will be my last, um, spiritual reading. I'm not going to do too many. So if you get in there, if you get in there on time, then it's spiritual and I welcome you, uh, with open arms. And then also the last thing I want to add is y'all. Make use of your spiritual gifts. I'm actually going to make a whole nother video about this, but Spirit had channeled to me that some of us are sick and some of us are actually lacking in abundance and prosperity because we're not making use of our spiritual gifts. You have skills. You got things that were naturally put in you that you have to use. And if you're not using them, Spirit is like, oh, you're not, you're not using what I gave you? Well, let me take that away. And then let me take that away. And to realize that the gift, the present, right? The present that I gave you is so that you can gift it to other people. All right? I uh, love you guys. Email me, relationshipalchemy1144 at gmail.com.